I'm going to show you two different ways to display a timer on your stage. Um, in both cases, you will need to create a variable so that you can actually have something to put your time into um, and take your time out of, so a container, if you will, for your seconds. So let's do that first. So we click on the stage, go into the variables menu, click on create variable, and let's call it um, timer. And we will have this timer reset to uh, zero at the beginning of the game. So this is quite simply just going to be time going from zero upwards indefinitely. So the first way we can do this is by clicking on the timer and adding what's called a watcher. When you click on that and add the watcher, what you'll notice is that this little green thing has appeared over here as its own layer. Okay, so there it is there. Um, it's not very attractive. You can change the color of it and those sorts of things. I'm just going to make it a bit bigger. And this is where the contents of your variable will be displayed. So let's have a look and see what it's actually generated here in terms of the code. Okay, so um, it is basically saying that the label, this is what's going to be shown in the timer, is this text here. So if I press play, you'll see it says timer. Okay, and it's a property of the stage. This is why it's always good practice to be clicked on the stage when you start doing this because some people uh, have experienced a situation where it says timer, but then the number isn't there. And that's because this needs to be a property of the stage. So just make sure you have stage in there. But at the moment, we haven't actually done anything to change what's in our variable. So it's just displaying zero because that's basically what's in there. Um, it's reset to zero at the start of the game, as we um, said before. So let's um, go and adjust our timer. We want to set our variable. Type in set as a search term. And we grab this one here, which says on start set. And when we click on that drop down, we'll see that that is the only variable that is available to us at the moment. So we'll click on that one, set the variable to zero. Okay. And then of course we want it to go up every second. And so we'll put that into the forever loop. And that is, um, and changing it by one means we search for a block that says change, change timer by one. And then of course we need to wait a second because if we don't wait a second, it's just going to go up very, very quickly and we won't even really be able to see it. Um, wait one second and then that's that. So let's have a look. One, two, three. So that's all working very nicely. Now, if you don't like the look of this uh, watcher timer, um, there is another way to do things, and that is by using the draw block. So let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so um, let's use this one here, uh, which says draw text at, and then, because then we'll get to pick where the text appears. Okay, and I'm going to put another on start block on top of it. The text that we need to have drawn is, of course, the contents of our variable. So let's go back, grab our timer variable, and pop it in there. Um, in terms of the XY position, well, if I click on this little grid button, I can see roughly where things might want to go and I think where I've got my mouse pointer here looks good so I'll go 450x by 290y. Now the text will be quite small so you can actually make it a bit bigger Set pen size. Set pen size to, I might make it 
in. You can also change the color. So grab this one here. And if you click on there, you'll be able to choose the specific color. So those are all some little things you can play around with. But what we now need to do though is look to our variable because we need to start increasing it by one every one second. So let's go back into our variables and we have to make sure we set it initially to zero and then let's go and find a forever loop so that we can keep changing it. And the way we'll do this is by putting our draw text tool in there and then we wait for a second, wait one second, and I'm actually going to put a, a wait one second on start as well so that it doesn't start right straight away. It gives us a little bit of time before the timer starts going up. So we're, we're set it to zero, we're drawing it, and now we have to change it every second. So change. timer by one. Now a funny thing about um, the draw the draw block is that um, it will just keep drawing over the top of itself. So if you want something to be drawn and then have it disappear and have a new thing drawn, you actually have to use this clear block here and clear it afterwards. And I'll also have it a clear block on start too just so that it clears and it's all fresh at the beginning of each game so let's now have a look and that's working nicely and that'll just keep going up indefinitely now if you wanted to have it um, count down from a certain number then that would be um, a case of say setting well I'll set it to something I'll set it to three and then instead of uh, going up by one will be going down by one. So we change this to negative one. And then we need to change a few other things here. So let's just detach this forever loop for now. And what we're actually looking to do um, is to have it count down and then really stop once it hits zero or um, maybe just disappear or we can have a message pop up on the screen saying that you've run out of time. So therefore, we need a repeat until block. So grab one of those. Here we go. And we'll say repeat until... The timer is zero. So go back to our variable. Let's find the timer variable and then over to our operators to get equals. Okay, so repeat until the timer equals zero, which of course means we've run out of time. Repeat what until the timer equals zero? Well, repeat counting down by one. So we draw the text. Let's get rid of our forever loop. So we draw the text in the same position. We wait for one second. We change the timer by negative one, and then we clear it so that we can do it again afresh. So I'll attach this to the main blocks, and then, um, what we might like to do after that is, like I said, just add a little block down the bottom so that once this is no longer true and it's it's zero, so it's going to stop taking one out of the timer each time it cycles around, we will have Tinker display the message that all the time has run out. And that's just another one of these draw text blocks. So going back in and searching using the word draw, and same block as before. Uh, draw text. This time we're going to say um, times up. Okay, and we will have it display that message at the same coordinates 450x 290y. And because at the moment it'll just flash in a millisecond and you won't even see it, we of course have to add a weight block 
and we'll display that message for maybe five seconds. And then that's that. So let's give it a go. Three, two, one, time's up. It's off the screen a little bit, so I could always just move that. Um, obviously, the way that I would do that is by changing the X position, making that a little bit closer to the middle, say 400. And it should look better. There we go. And if you wanted the game to stop at that point, um, then you would need to involve your other actors and have them um, also respond to the event where the timer hits zero.